and welcome to GMBN Tech. Today is an Ask Show where we dive into the comments and find any of your questions that have used hashtag AskGMBN Tech and we try and answer it on a show like this. Yeah, so get, get asking. Put them in the comments below. So first question is a good one. Uh, can water contaminate your rotors? Uh, if I use diluted water and, uh, sorry, diluted water, that'd be really good. Diluted soap and water and accidentally get, get it on my discs, will it contaminate them? In short, no, you'll be okay. Water by itself is completely okay. I mean, you might ride through water, you might ride through puddles. Um, and yeah, it'll make your brakes noisy, but it won't contaminate them. Oils, some hardcore soaps can contaminate them. Um, so if you're cleaning, say, your drivetrain and you get kind of flicks or spray or overspray, then potentially you can. Uh, but just water by itself is fine. My question is from Coco Loco. It says, what's the best way to clean my water bottle? I keep getting black gunk around the inside of it. Ooh, I do get this often because I'm lazy and I don't wash up my bath. <laughs> often, but that black stuff is mold and it's really not good for you. Um, so what I would say is when you have a bottle, uh, particularly if you put an energy powder in there, it can build up and start to create bacteria and start to go moldy and bad, and that's not good for you. Um, also, water that's been sitting around a really long time is not very healthy for you either. Um, so what I would say is as soon as you've used it, go ahead and wash it and wash it like you would normally wash any crockery, you can wash it by hand uh, with fairy liquid or washing up liquid, obviously, non-branded. Um, and you can put some in the dishwasher, but not always. There are specifications, believe it or not, on some bottles. They may only be able to withstand up to 40 degrees C um, of temperature. So if your dishwasher doesn't go below that, then it might not be dishwasher safe. Um, and also there are some really specialist bottles out there that say you're not even allowed to scrub them with a brush because they have a special lining, um, I believe. So um, do check out the specs of your bike, on, uh, sorry, of your bottle online because they are all different. However, what I will say is once you've got that build up of mildew, mold, whatever that black stuff is, you're gonna need to treat it properly. And I always use Milton, which is a brand name but basically it's baby bottle cleaner um, and that gets rid of residue and it gets rid of um, bacteria it disinfects effectively it does smell like a swimming pool uh, you will have to leave it in your bottle to soak perhaps overnight um, and then give it a clean afterward to, to get rid of that the solution afterwards because um, it won't taste very nice and it smells pretty bad as well and you don't want to ingest it um, so soak it overnight in something that is a bottle cleaner and then give it a wash afterwards. And that should reset things. And after that, just stay on top of cleaning it straight away. Okay, next question is from uh, Helpful To Me, which I guess a good oh, question is always helpful to the asker. Yeah, well, I may be or may <laughs> not be. The question is, is, well, it's singular, but it, I guess it should be, is the QR dead? Um, I mean, so <laughs> QR is short for quick release, and it was the kind of thing that we used in the olden days when we had rim brakes and the like to hold wheels in place. Um, it was directly borrowed from the road world. I mean, it's old history, a little bit of a history moment. It's the, the product that made Campagnolo. They invented oh, the quick release. So did not know that. Head nod to Tulio for making that fantastic product. Um, super light. They can be really good, not so great working with disc brakes. So slowly the industry has kind of filtered them out for bolt throughs, whether they be a kind of like pinch bolt or a sort of style of bolt through QR. I'm just thinking of like the, the Maxell with RockShox or the kind of QR or QR15 from Fox. Um, so they're not dead dead, but they're changing and evolving to better suit the needs that we need on, on mountain bikes. So, they're going to be stiffer, they're going to be much more secure, which you need with disc brakes because, yeah, a, a wheel falling out is not, not a winning combo. Um, but yeah, you can still buy them uh, because some road bikes still run them, so yeah. Okay, my next question from Yo-Yo EU 100 says, I want to build a dream e-bike based on Orbea Wild uh, e-bike frame. My question is, where can I find an Orbea Wild e-bike frame to start? Uh, can it even be bought as a spare part? Okay, so e-bikes aren't often 
frame only because they're usually specific to a motor for starters uh, so you'd need to buy the frame and the motor as well um, and usually you know buying an e-bike and building up from scratch can be quite complex because cables need to go in and out of motors uh, cables need to go around motors sometimes to power brakes and gears for example uh, if you're not going full electric and so generally it becomes um, probably more faff than a consumer consumer would want. Um, there are some that do, so Specialized sell the S-Works as frame only with the motor, um, but I think a lot of people will buy that from a concept store and get it built up like a dream bike. Um, also, when you buy it complete, you often get the warranty on the frame, the motor, and all the parts, so you get a full extended bike. So I do recommend buying a complete bike, uh, especially with some new tech like EMTBs. Um, but your question is relating to the Orbe are wild and they don't sell it frame only, they don't sell it frame with motor either. However, I will say uh, that everything on the Rise um, or the Wild, for example, M10 or spec above, you can personalize. So you can get that custom colored uh, as standard with the Mayo uh, with Orbea. You can also spec out certain things like your stem length, your bar width, uh, your crank length, um, some dropper post options there and some flexibility on tires and brakes as well. So I think you can spec out something pretty close to a dream build with that wild anyway. So do check out orbeo.com. Yeah. Okay, great question here, all about brakes. Um, so we'll kind of try and keep it on point. This is from Danny K. He's effectively asking, he wants to go to four pot because he wants more braking power. He's only got two pot SRAM brakes at the moment. So I guess there's three ways, as he says, he holds four fingers up that you can improve your braking before you actually bite the bullet and get new brakes. So first is, if you've got SRAM brakes, or even if you've got Shimano, bleeding them is a really good idea. That's gonna help keep the mineral or, or dot fluid in tip-top shape. And with SRAM, you're kind of tied to the fact that the brakes are using dot fluid, and that means it can absorb water over time. So you can get mushier brakes over time, so service them will make a big difference. Next point of call is you've done a great video on rotor size and how that can really improve your brake performance. So that would be the next thing. Switching pads, if you're riding in really wet and horrible conditions, switching to the metal or sintered pads can make a really big difference to brake performance. So I would say that's kind of three, three things to do beforehand. Obviously playing with lever position can be a fourth thing just to play with to get a bit more power. However, if you're gonna decide between Shimano and SRAM, well, there's horses for courses. So there's some of the SRAM brakes, especially ones that you've said that you're looking at, which is a code RSC. You get a little bit more adjustment um, at the lever, so you can dial in the lever probably a little bit better. It's a four pot, so it is really powerful. There's the new Maven that's just come out recently, but that is quite spendy. Shimano side, okay, there's slightly less adjustment. You've still got servo wave where you can adjust how the lever sort of tracks through its uh, bite point, but it's not quite as easy to use as the SRAM ones, but it does use mineral oil, which does, even SRAM say, so it lasts a little bit longer. So yeah, hopefully that helps you before you buy new brakes. Okay, now last uh, but not least question is Natanil who says, um, what is the difference between PT speed and assembly grease? I want to know if they both need to be replaced at the same time or if the extra performance requires more application. Um, good question, and this may apply to a lot of the other brands when it comes to the high performance greases versus the normal assembly greases. So uh, speed grease and high performance greases tend to be um, thinner, I would say, and they are great for fast moving parts like hubs, bottom brackets, uh, maybe your headset, maybe if you wanted it to, not necessarily. Um, and because they're thinner, they move quicker. So if you were to put a really thick grease into something like that, it can clog it up um, or it can make it move slightly slower. Um, these are marginal gains here. Uh, so that is the big difference between the two and that applies to PTs. However, um, what's really interesting about PTs speed grease is that they say the speed grease lasts 2.5 times longer than the assembly grease. That is all of our questions. So if you have any burning questions right Right now, in your mind, get them out into the comments below and use hashtag AskGMBN Tech with your comments so that we can find it. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.